Well, welcome back to part two. We're now moving on to our automations using limit switches or magnetic read switches. So I've got my list of automations just here. So this is our first one. But to get to the automation section, we're just going to go over here and down the bottom on the left, go into configuration and then click on automations. So this is where all the automations, scenes and scripts are kept. And we're going to add a new one just down here in the bottom right hand corner. So we'll skip this section and we'll move on to here. And I like to give them a name that has the area area that they're in. So it lists them in alphabetical order by area. So I start with garage because that's the area we're working in. But you can call it anything you want. So this is to, the trigger is to turn on the main lights. In the garage, if I can spell. So turn on the main lights for one minute. One minute <clears throat> and then they'll turn off automatically now the mode we're going to use is the restart mode now this is new to re relatively new and it was brought in in 0.113 and I've got the release notes for 0.113 home assistant and we have these run modes so it didn't previously have these it sort of had a single run mode that didn't work entirely correctly but now we've got four run modes. So single run mode, we've got a little chart here that describes what they do. The automation will start running on the trigger. And if there's another trigger while it's running, it won't do anything. It'll just ignore it or it'll log it to a warning. If we put it in restart mode and the automation starts running, then what happens if the trigger is received again, it'll restart the automation from the, from the start and stop the one that's running. So the restart mode is a pretty handy mode to have. Now, if you have lighting in a public bathroom with a motion sensor or even public car park, restart is an, a really good mode to have, to use, and not all sensors have it available. So for instance, you walk into a bathroom, the motion sensor turns on the light. Now you go to the bathroom and then you leave. Now the next person comes in and if the light's already on, in single mode, they go in to use the bathroom and then while they're in there, the lights turn off. So that's the downside of single mode. Whereas if it was restart mode, you can make the time a little bit shorter. And every time a person comes in to use the bathroom or every time a car drives into a public car park, it restarts the timer. And that means it's less likely that they're going to be called out in the dark. So it's a pretty cool mode to have, very useful in automations. And we're going to use that today in all of ours. We've also got queued mode queued mode just here so it queues up the automations in a row and we'll do one after the other and parallel it will runs them as the triggers come in in parallel so we're not going to use these two today and those queued and parallels have a max so you can set a max number that will be in the queue or run in parallel the default is 10 so let's go back to our automations so this is a restart automation now our trigger type our trigger is if the door goes to open or the door goes to closed when we go enter our garage from the scullery and that's the sensor that we have just installed so we're going to do a state and the end state of the entity which is the sensor we've just installed the scullery door binary sensor so we're going to do two so if it goes from if it goes to on and we're going to add another one exactly the same a state scullery door and this if this goes to off so it doesn't matter whether the door is opening and closing that way if the door is already open and we close it and walk in the light's still going to turn on so that sort of covers us on both bases now triggers are always or they're never and so you only need one of the triggers to happen for the automation to start if you want to include ands they come in the conditions section down here all right, so let's move on to the conditions section. And with our conditions, we're gonna have an or. So if it's night time, or if it's day and the garage door is closed. So we've got an or mixed in with an and. So we're gonna do that now. So first of all, to do the um, or condition, we're gonna select or, it's pretty obvious. Now we're gonna do 
if it's night time. So there's a few ways to do this, but this is the easiest way is to just do sun, sorry, state. And we're going to use the sun entity. And if it's below hor if the sun is below the horizon, so if it's, it's night time. Now we're going to add another one, and that's an and condition. Now our and condition is if it's day. So we can use a similar thing, the state of the sun. But this time we're going to do above horizon. And then we're going to do another one. So these are going to be and if the garage door is closed. So we're going to use our sensor on our garage door, the read switch that's on the floor. So we'll use state and the entity is the garage closed and the state is on. So if the, it's day and the garage door is closed, then this is going to occur. So what's going to occur? Let's come down here and we'll look at our actions. So what we want to do is do a service call and we want to turn on the lights in the garage, the main lights. Which is our main lighting. Now they use about 80 watts, so this is going to save us a heap of power because they always get left on. So this way it's going to be convenient and save us power. So we're going to turn the lights on. We're then going to turn them off. So we'll have a delay of one minute. So one minute and no seconds. And then we'll do another service call and we'll turn them off. So switch turn off. And that's it. That's our first automation all done. So I'll quickly go and test that and make sure it works okay. And then we can move on to our next one. So we'll save that. And that's saved without any errors. So I can give it a quick test and we can move on. It's all working fine. Let's move on to our second one. So our second one is going to be the motion detector. I'm, I'm sitting here on my office desk. It's going to be the trigger. And it's RF one, so it's a not it's a bit slow, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna have the lights on already when we walk in from the read switch. But this one will turn on my two lights over my office desk, and it'll once again have the same conditions as the first automation we did. And then the lights will slowly decrease after staying on at 60% brightness for five minutes, and then they'll turn off. Now, because it's a reach, restart, if we're moving around, then it will stay on full brightness all the time, all on 60% all the time, until we walk away, and then it will slowly turn off. So let's get started on this one. So we'll go back out, and we'll start a new automation. Now, our first trigger is going to be a state of our motion sensor. So we'll just select the garage motion sensor is our trigger and our conditions are going to be exactly the same. So I'll quickly go through these. All right. So for our actions in our actions section, just here, we are going to do a service call. And the service is lights, light turn on. And we're going to turn on more than one. So it's easy to select one. And you can swap over to YAML mode and do it in YAML mode. But we're not going to do that either. We are going, we can just type in our lights. So we're going to turn on the workstation. And then a comma and we can add more lights. So light, um, office, light. And we can check that if we went across into developer tools just here. We can check the states and we can check the naming. So maybe we can check if the office light is actually called that, which it is. If we wanted to double check the names of things. So we'll come back to here. We've got the right ones in there. And we're going to put in service data of six, about 60% brightness, uh, which is, and it's annoying when that happens, but we can just adjust it quite easily by doing this brightness 200 
So we'll save that. That should save out in errors. No worries. We can go back to the UI. So that's just there like that. Okay, now we add our five second delay. Now we're just going to copy and paste what we've done already. So we can grab these lights here and we can copy paste it into there. And we can copy paste the brightness as well. And we can just adjust it down to 160. We can save that and make sure it saves okay. So no errors. It's good. And we'll continue on. Okay, so here we're turning the light off, so we don't need to put our brightness in there. And I'm not sure what's that doing there. Okay, so we'll save that and make sure we've got no errors, which we don't. And that is all done now. So our second automation is complete. We can just do it, a, give it a te quick test run to make sure it's all right. Now we can move on to our third one, and that is going to be this one just here. So we're going to use the trigger as the garage door opening or the garage door closing. And we are going to have no conditions, but we're going to, for the actions, we're going to use a repeat until condition is met. And then we're going to have some choose. We're going to use the choose option to choose which condition warrants which option. So let's get started with that. Okay. So we'll just go out to our main screen here and we'll start a new automation. We're going to call it Okay, so once more we're doing that in restart mode And our trigger is going to be The open, the garage open or the garage closed switches So we've got two triggers So we're going to do the state of the garage closed And if that goes to off that means that the garage is opening. If, it, if the garage closed goes to off, the garage is opening. And then we're going to use another, the open trigger. The garage open sensor. And if that goes to off, it means that the garage door is closing. So we've got our two triggers here. Now we're going to move on to actions. We're going to skip past conditions and we're going to select the repeat function just here now we've got three choices and we're going to use the repeat until so we're going to repeat until one of these one of the door either opens or the door closes because we might open it with the remote control or that a wireless one in the car and we don't know whether it's opening or closing so it has to wait until the door opens or closes before we we'll know which direction it's going so to do that we're going to do a repeat until a condition is met and that is um, an or condition so we're going to have all and we're going to use a state of the open garage open so if the garage open turns on or the garage close turns on So if one of those turns on, then the condition will be met. So next we move on to the choose action. So we come down here and we're going to add action. We're going to select choose. And so our first option is going to be if the garage is open and it's daytime. So we add a condition and it's going to be an and condition. So if the garage is open, so we're going to do garage open. And state of the sun is above the horizon, so it's daytime. So that's our first option, and the actions for that option will be turn the light off 
because we don't need the light on if the garage is open and it's daytime. So we're going to select call service and switch turn off the garage light. So that's our first choice just there. Now we're going to option. So now we're going to do our next option. Add an option. And the condition for that option is going to be so if the garage closes, then we're going to want the light on whether it's daytime or nighttime. So we're going to do state. Then we want the action to be turn the lights on. So we're going to do service call, switch turn on. So that's our second option. Now our third option is going to be the default one. So we don't actually have to do conditions for this one because if these two aren't true, then this one will, this action will occur. Now. The only options that are really left are if the, if the garage is open and it's night time. So in that case, we'll want to turn the lights on if that is the case. So we're simply going to do turn lights on, turn the switch on. So there we have it. We've got all our options set. We can save that. And that saved okay with no errors. So we've got our repeat until. And one more thing we need to add in here is actually a, just a delay. We're just going to put a delay of a second. So every second it will, every second it will check to, basically every second it will just check to see whether the door, what door is either open or closed. And as soon as the door is either open or closed, it'll move on to the next thing. Because these actions are essentially a script. Well, they are a script. And they work their way through in order. So once this is completed, it will move on to the next one, which is the choose option. So it goes waits for the door to be open or closed and then once it's open and closed it moves on to choose and we have our options here for choose which we've just gone through so that's our automations all done we'll try that out and see how it works now okay so i've checked out this automation and there's one little error that we've made i've made and that is just here in option number one now basically we want if it's the door opens and it's daytime then we want this light switch to actually turn off. So we'll just change this to off. So if it's daytime and the door opens, the light switch will turn off. And another thing that I've noticed too in the last default action, and that is we could probably add a delay of this, and then we can turn the light off. So that cleans that up, and that's a good working automation that we've got just there. All right, let's go check it out in real life. And now it's ready to try out our automations in actual life. So we can see that the garage light is off. Now, if we open the door, it's on. I'll show you that. You can see it's on because the light's on. And it's so quick, it's very convenient. Now we can also try out our garage door if we open it. So as it opens, our lights will turn off because it's daytime, like so. Now if we close it, our lights will come back on again, like so. So our automations are all working awesome. They should save us quite a bit of power and be very convenient as well. So that's what the whole point of automations is to make our lives better and more convenient. And you'll see a future project that might ha happen soon up there. And that's the one minute timeout. Well, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope I've highlighted the usefulness of these little read switches or limit switches and how we can make awesome use of them in our home automation system. If you are building a house or you're doing a renovation, make sure you include plenty of these because they're cheap and easy to install. And I hope that the automations were helpful for you and anything you might be working on. And you can get a little bit of an insight into exactly how Home Assistant works. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching. And if you want to see more videos on home automation and electrical installations, please subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. I'll catch you next time. Bye.